Hello. Hello. My name is Sophia Metropolis. First, I hate to do this to you, but I have to do a fit check. This fit is amazing and I love it. I did put it on again because I worked work yesterday and I didn't get enough of it. I feel great. My chains. Come on, y'all. Thanks for that. Thanks for letting me do that. <laughs> I started this YouTube channel in May of 2020, and in June of 2020, I left Instagram as a platform. Previously, Instagram was my primary platform as an artist, as a business owner, as a creator online. That's where I put all my focus and all my work. After spending only a month on YouTube, I ditched Instagram completely, which I'm not necessarily saying you have to do, but I did make a whole video talking about whether or not we need Instagram and how social media balances our life as artists, which you can watch up there. But the point is, after only a month on YouTube, I realized that YouTube was so much more valuable of a platform for me as an artist than Instagram really ever was. Now, there's plenty of benefits to Instagram. Primarily, the immediacy of the platform really helps. So the fact that you can time a launch and post that on Instagram and have people be excited about it at the right time, that is incredibly valuable. However, my video today is not about comparing YouTube and Instagram as platforms, but instead arguing for why I think YouTube is just as valuable, if not more valuable, from a marketing perspective for artists to be on, and why more artists should be starting YouTube channels in 2021. So let's start with the basics. Obviously, first one is there's an opportunity to make money on YouTube in a way that there is not available on Instagram. Point blank. After hitting a certain threshold as a creator on YouTube, you can turn on AdSense. If you've acquired the threshold reasonably and genuinely, you get money from ads. You can run ads on your videos and you can earn revenue that way immediately. It's pretty crazy. Now I'm gonna make a whole separate video about how much money I made in my first YouTube paycheck. But the fact that that's even an option to turn on a revenue stream just for creating content online, that's still a very new response to content creation. There's really only a few platforms that do it and it's YouTube, Twitch, OnlyFans, <laughs> and Patreon, pretty much, as far as I know, off the top of my head. I'm sure there's others. So that's something to consider just right off the bat, is the fact that there is opportunity for financial growth on the platform. And in many cases, the threshold to that is consistency. It's really not much more than consistency and the willingness to learn and get better and practice and hold yourself you know, to a schedule and also just like to set a reasonable schedule for whatever works for you. You know, that's part of it too. I'm reading for my notes also, if you see me looking over there, that's why. Another thing that I really like is that the slower form schedule allows you to focus on the creation of the work and the sharing of the process. So it's not just sharing the finished piece, but it's sharing the work and the process of you doing it and your thoughts going into it. It's incredibly valuable to be able to share that experience alongside your art. And beyond that, you are more than just your work. You as a creator are more interesting than just the pieces that you make. And having a YouTube channel where you can interact with the camera while you're working and talk with the people that are watching you make your work allows your viewers and your audience to get to know you as a creator. And when they get to know you as an artist, they can begin to understand your work a lot better. And I know what you wanna say. You wanna say, Sophia, the market is oversaturated. There's so many of them. There's so many artists on YouTube. I can't compete. I'm not as good. Well, take a look at my freaking channel, bro. I make videos where I sit at my desk and I have no concept of what I'm gonna do and then I just yeet it. And that counts. That works. That's allowed. You can do that. There's no rules. Oh my God, just do it. There's no rules. <laughs> this isn't a bullet point, but just do it. There's no rules. Have fun. Like. Let it be a, an extension of your artwork, an extension of your practice. How do you document the work that you're making? How do you make work about the work that you're making? And the next part of that is you have a phone. You can do it. There's no this, I don't have the right equipment. I don't have the right ma materials. You can do it on your phone. You can film it with your phone. You can edit it with your phone. You can publish it from your phone. And that's the existence of it is what matters. It's not the quality of it. It's the consistency and the existence. So the fact that it goes up and it goes up regularly are the only two things that really matter. And if you're really overwhelmed by it, I like one video a week. I think that's a good place to start. That's where I started. And then I was like, I have space in my mental capacity and my creative flow to do two. So I bumped it up to two, but I started with one. And if one was too much, then maybe I would move it down to one every other week. And that would be my schedule. But you gotta stick to the schedule because we're working with an algorithm here, people. We're working with a website that wants to keep people on their platform. And that's what it is, you know? Like, unfortunately, becoming an artist and existing as an artist online is a algorithm game. So the more you know about an algorithm and the more you play to an algorithm, the better you'll do, especially on a website like 
YouTube, which is uh, SEO. So you can literally just search engine optimize your videos. And then when people search for things, you show up. That's why you know me from Himi Gouache, probably, if you've been here. So, you know, what's my next bullet point? Let me know if you like this chaotic setup, this chaotic style. The other thing, the other thing about making videos is that you're gonna do it differently from other people because you're you and you have a different combination of creators that you watch and you're excited about than somebody else does. So no two people are gonna be the same because there's no two people that are the same. You can't, you can't make the same work as somebody else. You can copy their style, you can mimic their flow, but what if you're an art channel and you're copying from a travel channel? then you're not the same as, you're, you know, already you're not the same. Point is, find inspiration in many places, my friends. My next piece of advice is that you learn about yourself and you learn about your work when you're confronted with the reality of filming and editing your own process. Let that sink in. When you make work, and this is coming specifically from my experience, so I'll speak in the eye and you can just apply it to yourself. When I make work and I film myself making that work, in the process of the filming, I know I'm talking to the camera, I know I'm speaking out loud, but I'm not really considering how that's affecting my work. Like I personally don't make work that I'm, I just make what I would make whether the cameras are on or off. Obviously there's some degree of like being watched that I'm sure changes some things, but I don't consciously change what I'm making for the camera. And I just talk about whatever comes to mind for the most part. But what I find most interesting about having this video and having this document is the edit process. Because in the edit, I'm forced to confront these thoughts again because I'm editing out in my editing style, I usually take out all the pauses, all the ums, um, um, and pretty much most breaths. So if I take an extended breath, I cut that whole thing out. <laughs> but I leave in the parts where I'm talking, and then usually I'm working with a two camera setup, so I'm cutting between the two. I can make a whole video about how I make my, if you're interested in how I edit my videos, let me know in the comments and I will actually make that video, but not until somebody actually requests it, you know? But the point is, by editing down these videos, I'm forced to confront and rewatch my technique and I'm forced to listen to my thought patterns and see trends in how I'm creating. And I didn't think that that was going to be my experience. I never really thought of that when I was starting my YouTube channel as something that I could learn from or benefit from, but it makes sense because in my re-watching from literally a third party perspective of my own creating work, I can see mistakes more clearly and I can see things that actually were working that maybe I didn't notice. It's not totally unlike athletes re-watching their sport because you're analyzing. And I think it's really important to make work in the moment and analyze later. And I didn't really realize how beneficial making consistent YouTube videos would be for that. That being said, if there is one thing that changed my experience actively making work and my art practice in my day-to-day -day life, it is the implementation of the discipline schedule of keeping this YouTube channel. In May, when I started my channel, I told myself I would make one video a week. I made one video a week for I think three weeks and then I bumped it up to two. And basically my promise to myself at that point was that I would consistently put up two videos every week to the best of my ability, barring some ridiculous event that really made it impossible until I hit 100 videos. And if I wasn't monetized by the point that I hit 100 videos, I would stop making videos. I got monetized on, I think my 55th video, 54th video. So that's something. And I think somebody asked me early on when I started this channel, like why I was being so disciplined about it. And I think it's because part of me was like, well, if I take it seriously, other people will take it seriously. And I was embarrassed about being seen trying. <laughs> and so I wanted to make it really clear to everyone involved that this was gonna be serious and I was going to not fuck around for lack of a better word. And I didn't, and I'm not, and I still take it seriously. But I think, I think also having this channel and having the ability to take these two videos a week so seriously has forced me to consistently be creating, consistently be thinking about art, consistently be working in a time where I otherwise probably would have let that slip between the cracks, considering what's going on in the pandemic, considering I'm working, you know, my life has taken other turns. If I didn't force myself to make these videos, I don't know if I would be making as much art as I am. And so I won't stop making these videos because they keep my practice running. And I don't think I need them to make my practice, but the self accountability to put them up on time and regularly, consistently, in a regimented way has benefited my creative practice more than I could have ever expected. 
So I guess what I'm trying to say is, it surprised me. I did not expect any of this, any of it. I just thought I would make some YouTube videos and maybe I would make some money. I never thought about all the other ways that it could benefit me and my creative practice. And you know what? I never thought it would become my favorite platform. It's my favorite platform. Like, you guys are too nice. I, I can't even imagine. I spent so many, so much time convincing myself to not make a YouTube channel because I was like, the people in the comments are gonna be mean. And you guys are so nice. Even my grandmother, hello Yaya, even my grandmother has contacted me and said, she's 96 by the way, has said how nice people are in the comments. People that I know, that I meet, will watch my YouTube channel and be like, wow, the people that comment on your videos are so nice. But what? What the hell are you guys? Why are you so nice? Thank you. It's really, really makes me feel good. Makes me want to film these videos. <laughs> <laughs> okay, this was chaotic and um, sort of a different style of video because I couldn't sit still and so I just kept moving around my room. So I hope you enjoyed it. If this is the first video you've ever watched on my channel, what a way to start, baby. Thank you for being here. Thanks for making it this far. My recommendation for you would be to subscribe. <laughs> and for all of the rest of you, if you've seen my channel before, thanks for clicking on another video. I hope you like it here. My name is Sophia Metropolis. I make art and art related things and I also make videos. If you're thinking about starting a YouTube channel, just do it. I wish I started earlier and I think a lot of other creators would say that. It's really important to just start. <laughs> And if you need other motivational thoughts from me, you can click on this playlist right here about my thoughts and musings. And also, if you want to see what YouTube thinks is the best option for you, you should watch this one. Thank you so much for watching. My name is Sophia Metropolis. I'll see you in the next one. Bye!